Everybody Hates Rand is a Wheel of Time podcast that will contain spoilers for all 14 books. So if you're anti-spoiler, pause this, read all 14 books, and come back. We'll be here. Waiting. Our title is a joke and is meant to be taken as such. In the context of this podcast, everybody refers to us and our cat. You are free to feel however you want about Rand, who is a fictional character. Don't DM us. The world is a mess, dark one stretching out his hand. The dragon's reborn, the fire's been fanned, but everybody hates Rand. Everybody hates Rand. Everybody hates Rand. All right, this is going to be the shortest recording session of all time because we only have eight minutes and 30 seconds to <laughs> my pizza is out of the oven. Shadow Rising is a bad book. The end. End of podcast. Mm-hmm. What, wouldn't that be... What if we... <laughs> <laughs> what if... I'm serious here. What if we just skipped to the fires of heaven? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we should come back to that. Um, there's too much... The problem is with the Shadow Rising, there's too much good... Matt mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And there's some pretty good Night Nave stuff. Yeah. That's it. I couldn't think of anything else. I just... Well, let's read some of the reviews. They're always pretty wild. I don't... I, oh, no. What are they gonna say? This book is a great paperweight. <laughs> 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 this fucking book could be the bricks on which you build. The, next. the fourth volume of the most ambitious American fantasy saga continues to suggest that the Wheel of Time will also be the finest. Dot, dot, dot. This volume, indeed the whole saga, surpasses all but a few of its beers <laughs> and is highly recommended for all collections. Get off the table, you slut! The great thing about Wheel of Time um, uh, <laughs> reviews is that they're all so subtly yeah. brutal. <laughs> All but a few of its peers. Yeah. <laughs> like, bronze medal to you, Robert Jordan, but definitely not You gold. happened to come in fourth. You didn't medal, yeah, but... You, you did okay. Hmm. It's And these books continue to suggest. They haven't got there yet. <laughs> Especially this one knocked you down a couple rungs. Yeah. I also love this. This one's like in all of them. Locus says, the series is so complex. I can't recommend starting anywhere but at the beginning. I know, that one like, is what? hilarious. <laughs> like, did Harriet, when she was putting together these books or whatever, I don't know what her actual job was as editor, <laughs> was she like, we gotta put in that one review because we don't want an unwary victim opening these books in book four and being like, what the fuck am I? Be like, this Am I bad. supposed to know what the shit is going on? I mean, as someone who chronically picks up the third book in trilogies, not realizing that they belong to trilogies, you do make a valid point. That is pretty, um... It's alarming, I know. Yeah, it's a little... (laughs) It's happened several times. (laughs) A little upsetting, but sure. Well, I just don't even know what to say. It doesn't feel good in the hand. Oh, well, this caught... That could be because it was literally in my trunk for... Um, oh well, approximately nine months. This isn't a joke. I put a lot of Wheel of Time books in the back of my car to weigh it down for when it was snowy outside. I think that was a valuable choice. I'm sorry. Yeah, I no, I've had I had a very safe winter. Surprisingly, driving, I didn't ever feel like I was gonna skid off the road. So, yeah, the Wheel of Time, the Shadow Rising, did its job. This reminds me that A Memory of Light is also probably in the trunk of my car, and I have to dig it out so I can start doing my vlogs again. Right. Fuck me, right? We haven't even fucking introduced ourselves, and we're down to halfway through the podcast because my pizza <laughs> is coming out in four minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> this is Everybody Hates Rand, your friendly neighborhood wheel of time podcast. <laughs> I'm Emily Chushaw. And I'm Sally Goodger. We're back in black. Bitches. I, lo- I love Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I love Led Zeppelin. That is probably the most finely executed joke yeah. in all of film history. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hand that award to Marvel, to... I want to hand it to Tom Holland, I, yeah, specifically. Yeah, really, he really nailed that delivery. Yeah. He just... Oh, I love it. Led Zeppelin. I love Led Zeppelin. <laughs> now, 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 now. Yeah, that's... Isn't that how it goes? I can't do the guitar noises with my mouth. Some people are blessed with that, and I am not one of them. I also can't do drumming on the car steering wheel. 
You know how some people can, like, actually drum along to a song? Because they have a sense of rhythm, which I <laughs> apparently lack. Your hair's getting very poofy. I know. It's on my to-do <laughs> list to cut it tonight, okay? It's a little distracting. I'm sorry. No, I think it looks very good. No, it but does But it's just also very poofy. It's just, it's, it's a little just... hedgehoggy around the sides right now. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. <laughs> okay. This is our stupid podcast Ugh. or whatever. I keep looking at the timer being like, surely my four minutes is about to be up on my pizza. But no! It's down to three minutes now. What the hell? What? Liz is my niece. Recurring character on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, we talk about constantly because she's hilarious. Has uh, discovered the phrase, what the heck. Oh, And God. it's the funniest thing in the entire world. What the world. heck? Because she'll just be like, what the heck? In her tiny little three-year-old little, voice. Her little baby voice. It's very what cute. What the heck? What the heck? Anyway, I love my niece. She's a baller a light and a shot lives. caller. Should we talk about the cover first? I think we have to. I think we have to address the elephant in the room, which uh, is the cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them. Seriously, though, I know it is like titty. Is that supposed out. to be more rain? I refuse see. to believe that more rain does not show that much titty. Yeah, Moiraine. what's that like, lady? That whoever's pretending to be. Like, sexy peddler lady? Yeah, well, there's two peddler ladies at the end. There's yeah. the quote-unquote ugly one, who yeah. is actually Lanfear. Shwink, shwink. Yeah, who's using the classic femme fatale, uses old or ugly woman disguise to trick young man. We'd never know. And then there's a woman who's actually just, like, a huge slut, and I appreciate that about her. Yeah. And um, just loves money. And it's like, and she's a dark friend, I think, but she's there also. But you're also kind of like, these are values I respect. Yeah, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to say that that is her, because also I have, find it impossible to believe that Moiraine would not have somebody bring her food. I just think it doesn't make sense to me that the sexy ladies that like... Okay, but I just don't want it to be Moiraine. No, no, I don't want it to be Moiraine either, but I think it is. I think because she's got the dark hair and ringlets... Uh. Which is like an '80s perm. Yeah, and the blue dress. Uh, like my that... mom had that exact haircut. I think. <laughs> and I bet Becky rocked it when she visited the ale waist. She probably did. My mom was fucking hot. And Becky was really hot. She's yeah. still pretty beautiful. She's still extremely beautiful, but when she was like yeah. my age, damn, she was hot. Yeah, can't believe it took your dad days. 17 dates to kiss her. More than 17. I'd dates. be like, this is a revelation I found out earlier this week, people. That it took my dad double digits to mac my mom like what the fucking christopher she's so hot though yeah how did you get 17 plus yeah exactly <laughs> fucking question uh, hey, oh the pizza, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna pause while you eat your pizza or do you want to eat on air <laughs> some great well, audio cool cool. right now and then we'll no, full figure it out in the it mouth goes. i can just we can just get some Primo blooper reel content. Yeah, that might be hilarious. Um, For now, let's keep talking about the cover. I just don't want it to be Moiraine. That's so. But like, then who? Okay, obviously this is Rand because he's got kind of reddish hair. He is also blatantly wearing jeans as a glass. Yeah. What is it like? I feel like Robert Jordan discovered Barry Blue jeans. What in the hell? I don't understand why they have Randall Thor in jeans. Yeah, then they've got this guy here in a red jacket who it's like, is that supposed to be Matt? Because he's got a longbow? Nope, but Matt doesn't even carry a longbow at this point. You're and then right. you've got Dances with Wolves in the background. Yeah, who's like, who is that? Is that Ruark? Lan? Who Lan? knows? Lan? Like, what is going on? Yeah, I'm confused because at first glance I was like, oh, the jackets are color-coded. This is Rand and this is Matt. But you're yeah. right. This one has the red hair and the classic Rand blue jeans. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, who's this bitch? Can't be Matt. Right? Or maybe, again, the person didn't read it and Harry was like, I don't know, Matt's the one with the bow. I can't remember. And so they just gave him a bow. Okay, we're back. (laughs) Emily ate 18 pizzas. Yeah, I ate so many pizzas. Do you feel so strong now? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's my fuel is frozen pizzas that I <laughs> put in the oven. I've been eating a lot of frozen pizzas lately because now I have a grown-up job, so I don't have time to cook as much. Yeah. It sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. We were talking about the cover and how upsetting it is that Moiraine's entire titties are out. Because <laughs> it's just like, on the one hand, good for you. 
tits out. But on out. the other hand, that's not Moiraine. Like character. on the one hand, canonically, Moiraine does run naked through the desert. Yeah, in which this is book, pretty legendary. Which is like, yeah, which is the one reason we can't skip this book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because Matt's like, is that was that? Matt's like, is that Avienda? And Rand's like, no, you're joking. And Matt's like, I'm not joking, <laughs> and I'm not hallucinating. <laughs> I just You're saw, the crazy one ranch, not me. Yeah. I just saw a naked woman run I just through saw the a naked woman run through the desert and I have no idea why. And it's not my fault you don't know what a naked woman looks like. I mean he does. Well no he doesn't because they're always in the water in his dumb sex dreams. Yeah, and sex igloo is until book five. Oh! <laughs> We're gonna have a I'm gonna dress in all black and a veil for the sex igloo episode. <laughs> gonna dress in Victorian morning clothes. I think for the sex igloo episode, <laughs> we should just both come prepared with, like, a very bad sex scene that we have discovered either in another book or on the internet somewhere and just read it out loud. Okay. For inflict that on you guys. What if we wrote our own bad sex scenes? Oh, no. <laughs> the problem is I'm so good at writing sex scenes. You really are. <laughs> it's a hidden talent. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I heard one in church. It was really fun. Yeah, that was really one of the funniest things of all time. I was like, did you already read this? And I was just like, I'm in church. I was bored. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, Sex and is going to be a fun episode then. Yeah, but until then, we have so many non-fun episodes to get through. <clears throat> Maybe this, we just started every episode with a bad sex. This cover, <laughs> this cover's so pink is one thing about it. Yeah, I also think that wagon that they have is so interesting. It's like, like, it's just so odd because most of the other books, covers, you they lend themselves to the belief that the artist did not necessarily read the book, <laughs> obviously. But generally speaking, you can, like, distinguish which characters yeah. are which, like, central characters. Like, The Great Hut is, like, an actual scene. The Dragon mm-hmm. Reborn is sort of a bastardization of an actual scene. Eye of the World... Fires of Heaven, I guess. Yeah, I can think of what that is. It's when they're, like, in Camelin. Oh, yeah. Right before, oh, yeah. right before <laughs> everyone gets their asses kicked. Right before Matt Rand punches Rand in the kidneys. Yeah, Rand has to retcon their deaths. Yeah. Rand's like, wait, 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 wait. Hold up a second. <laughs> OOC. OOC. <laughs> Don't kill my friend. Dad? <laughs> Do I can't kill Matt? You can't kill Matt. I'm a comic relief. But, like, generally speaking, most of the... Or, you know, we get to the phase of books that's just, like, Rand looking dramatic and flexing. <laughs> which is, like, whatever. That's a genre, I guess. The Shadowy Je- Rising is just such an enigma. Yeah, I know. Everything about it is confusing. Like, I have no idea who these characters are. I have no idea what they're doing. I don't know where this takes place in the book. It's just, like, sort of a vibe. Like, here we are in the ale waste, but these people do not look like ale. No, Except there's just, like, like ale hair. and maybe ale in the background. Like, when they describe the um, ale garb, Cadenzor, is that what it is? I think so. Like, that's not what I picture. Like, a just a tan tunic over tan breeches with tan boots. I think of it as, like, funner gear, you know? Yeah, more stylized. Like camo pants. <laughs> oh, my God. The, like, desert camo pants. Yeah, and just, like, more stylized, more just, like, costume. Yeah, like, Sarah, seen... Sarah McClintock would have ideas about this, I'm sure. Yeah, I've seen some really cool renderings of ale yeah. garb. It's just, just, like, these so, are yeah, not. This, lazy. <laughs> like, this looks, it legitimately does look like what a mountain man would wear, like, tanned leather. Yeah, or like, suede or like whatever. The, this looks like the beginning of the Dahmer party, you know? Jesus Christ. So swing and a miss, Daryl K. Sweet, on this one. But. I like the blue of the shadow, the actual letters. I think I said that about the dragon mask. Yeah, the, match, oh the my god. You did. You totally the dragon did. You were report. like, the lettering is nice, because you can't think of anything else nice to say about it. <laughs> no, I just think it's such a nice pale blue. It's very soothing in contrast, like, like the yellows and stuff. And then there's Moiraine's dress. Yeah, Moiraine is the sort of focal point almost because As she's she in blue. fucking should be. As she should be, but then it's like, oh, now I do have to look at her tits, because... There are lines, there are gazes drawn yeah. to it. So, like, what the fuck? Why does that... Moiraine would not wear a low cut dress? Moiraine? Not that there's anything wrong no. with that, but Hell just yeah. given Moiraine's character, character is she's sort of a sort of a tightly laced woman. Yes, yes, exactly. Do you want to read my alternate shadow okay. titles? I forgot that you did that. All right, let me crack my knuckles. Oh, I cracked one singular knuckle. I wish oh, I could present go. these. I need to figure out a way to present these to you in a way where you don't just, like, see the full list. Um, where you just see one at a time. What if you made me a PowerPoint? I could make you a PowerPoint. <laughs> Should we pause again for ten minutes? To 
<laughs> yeah, that would no. be. No. Then we could post it on our website. <laughs> you oh could do God. star wipes. <laughs> I'll do that for fires of heaven, I promise. <laughs> okay. Okay, you have to scroll down once. I did um, uh, all of the central six characters plus Min, because she actually has a character arc in this one, sort of. She's in the White Tower. Oh, is this Fall Mandretta? Yeah. And I gave one to Mary Rain and one for Lanfear. Lanfear? Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) I like the theme. Yeah, well, I was in traffic and trying to think. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Rand. Ego rising. (laughs) Elaine. (laughs) Daddy issues rising. R.I.P. Tom. Send one up. <laughs> Nynaeve. Combat stats rising. <laughs> Min. Character arc rising that cometh before the fall. That's true. This is her peak character. Yeah, yeah After this, true. it's just all downhill. Yeah. Matt. Literally rising because of the dang rope around his neck. <laughs> Edwin. Cultural appropriation rising. Or is it... Question we can mark, talk question about mark, it. Question mark. Yeah, is Edwin doing a cultural appropriation in this? She's doing some weird stuff with yeah. culture. We'll talk about it. Okay. I can't believe you've done this. I'm <laughs> sorry. Perrin. Dick rising. But also, amount of dead relatives rising, which is a pretty upsetting combo if you think about it. It really is, though. <laughs> Why is Perrin's horniest book also the one where his entire family gets murdered? Listen, I have said it before. At least in someone's graffitied book, that it is sure. absolutely fucking stupid to give parent a huge family that you then just murder. It, that doesn't <laughs> actually become a trauma that impacts his character. In any way? In literally, and he has one scene of crying and then Fail like sucks him off and he's like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah, like literally, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get there. I can't. <laughs> oh, I see what you were singing now. Oh. Land fear. Bad moon rising. <laughs> <laughs> that came on on my way home, and I was like, dun, dun. <laughs> Moiraine. <laughs> Patience swiftly dropping. <laughs> yeah. Not my best work, I'll admit, but also no, The Shadow funny. Rising is the definition of mediocrity, so. I told you it was good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So nice of you. I'm going to delete this. Person. Delete this note. Just kidding. No, I won't. No, make me a PowerPoint. Yeah, if you love me. (laughs) If you love me, you'd make a PowerPoint. (laughs) Isn't that how the kids do it nowadays? Yeah, it's definitely how they do it these days. Star wipes. Or the one that's like the checkerboard that like flips them on top. The what? Okay. I don't think anyone does really. Does this one have a (laughs) prologue? Oh god, it does. Fuck me, right? It's called Seeds of Shadow. (laughs) That doesn't make any sense. I know, it just... What? (laughs) Seeds of Shadow. We get some uh, Shanchen stuff. We get White Tower drama. Oh, have to just go through and wipe out Gawain's name everywhere. Actually, it's mostly um, Gawain's hey, point of view. Hey, oh, it's not a sh- it's not a prologue. It's chapter one. Well, see, go figure. But it does sort of function as a prologue because then the next chapter is like our main boys. We don't have to talk about this. The Shadow Rising is a terrible book. Like, we kind of got into this a bit at the beginning of our weird extra episode, which I realized I did not call episode 76. My brain just automatically called it an extra, so I'm sorry if I messed up your number system. Uh, Would you like this bottle cap? You're not supposed to be on the table. Do you want this episode to be 76? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'll fix it. I'm just stupid. I should have asked before I... Oh, you don't... (laughs) I'm just neurotic and my brain was like... Okay. Okay. So, ah. We talked about this a little bit at the beginning of our um, advice podcast that we did last time. Sorry. <laughs> Just a blanket apology for that one. No, that was a good... We gave you good advice. You're welcome. You can take that advice to the freaking bank. Yeah. Find a federal credit union. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about banks. I don't either. Banks are stupid. They kind of scare me. We need to open a bank account for this podcast. Mm-hmm. We it? can't talk about this one here. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> we talked about this a little bit at the beginning of our advice podcast, but there are parts of The Shadow Rising that are so interesting. Predominantly, like, I find Matt's arc in this book really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's... Un- <laughs> okay, I can't, I can't do that. Bad audio. There you go. <laughs> 
already lost it, you absolute dingus. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, it's still going to be bad audio. Tibble. Anyway, Tibble's in prison now. We made it pretty far into this episode. <laughs> yeah, we He's did. got a bottle cap with him, though, so at least we sent him with a... Yeah. Uh, you know, normally they just get a, a paper bag and <laughs> <laughs> let them loose. Um, but there are parts of this book again that are so interesting. Like Matt's arc is really fascinating, and Rand is at the center of it, which is actually I don't have much problems with Rand's arc in this book in particular because it becomes so tied in with the ale and his adoption narrative is interesting and we can talk about that. But like the ale's cultural trauma and the way that that begins to play yeah. out is interesting it's not necessarily like it's it's a good it's good fodder for discussion yeah. i think is what it is because it's like is it white saviorish because yeah. you do have this like outsider perspective yeah. on something that is very much to do with the culture and although he can't technically claim it as part of his heritage he also more or less insists on being ignorant of it yeah. for the next, like, six books. He, he seems, and it's constantly, like, he's making an active decision to not, yeah, like, immerse himself yeah. or understand it. Or, or and he, like, doesn't feel any connection to it, which yeah. I find interesting about, because he's so desperate, of course, to hold on to Tam as his father, which is... An Another under, interesting thing. Yeah, yeah, an understandable sentiment, but also, like, I don't know, just interesting. Yeah. Um, and so kind of building off the ale, you also, and their like culture break and their, that trauma that happens is this is the book where like we start to see a lot of geopolitical fracturing in wheel world, Mm -hmm. which, um, when Emily first sold the wheel of time to me as something I should read, she was like the first three books while entertaining and interesting really don't, they're just kind of very prototypical high fantasy and it's once you get into the late third book and beyond where the wheel of time starts to really sort of take on a life of its own and become something that's really kind of does some unexpected and weird things. And this is where those things start to happen. But unfortunately you also have Perrin going back to the two rivers, completely like shattering the hero's journey in a way that is obvious because it doesn't work for Perrin. I don't think. Yeah. There's a, um, There's a sort of weird need, I think, at the center of this, which I think a lot of, I can't, I can't quite back this up yet, but a lot of high fantasy deals with the idea of going back home and home being changed and now having to rescue home. Like, this is taken straight out of the end of The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, of course. Where the hobbits go back to the Shire and still have to save the Shire. Yeah, it goes back to the Odyssey where Oedipus comes home and, Oedipus, oh my hell, Odysseus (laughs) comes home and everything is fucked. Yeah, like, it's a thing that even when you get home, there's still shit to do, Mm -hmm. but it's also just, like, it's bad because this isn't actually the end of the book yeah like this is too transparently like a method for a parent to accumulate an army and power and it's like it yeah it just doesn't really work for him yeah it really like because i think it's pretty safe to say that there's like a little bit of a division between like the narrative arc of the first three books and then the narrative arc of the rest of the series because so it's like totally fine to see some like plots wrapped up in those first three books i think like rand has pretty much um accepted what's going to happen for better or for worse and like well you also more or less have the series broken up into trilogies mm -hmm. those first three books are really like centralized on this one arc of rand becoming the dragon reborn and claiming that and then books four through six, I think, are kind of, like, more or less a lot to do with Rand getting a solid base of power mm-hmm. and a lot of characters moving into that. Like, this is where, in the next three books, Matt's going to get an army mm-hmm. and, like, you know, become a fucking general. Perrin's going to acquire an army. Uh, Edwina is going to become the Amarlin seat. Hell yeah. Uh, and Elaine and I are going to sort of rise into being Aes Sedai. Yeah. So and it's just Rand like, gets the continent. Yeah, Rand gets the entire fucking no. He gets the yeah, he weird get like alien. He gets the weird southeast portion of the yeah. continent. <laughs> I don't know, and everything, all the ale waste. Yeah, dun dun. Yeah, so it's just. So yeah, I completely lost my train of thought. Sorry, I totally interrupted. No, it's you're totally right. Like it does get those kind of like brackets on yeah. certain books where there are thematic things happening, and in a series so big like we've said before like it's so it's okay that the wheel of the hero's journey turns several times and like there are macro hero micro hero journeys inside the macro hero's journey but like 
the frustrating thing about Perrin, and I've realized this especially as I've reread the last few books in this series, are that he is never given he's never given anything new yes. to think about or to talk about or to deal with. Yeah. Like, take Matt, who sorry, he's the easiest example. Matt goes through these stages of different things developing in his character. Mm-hmm. We had kind of uh, the first three books, which really dealt with his uh, foolishness and his trickster side and his mischief and just kind of like his growth from court jester, home fool, like village idiot to kind of being someone centrally in the narrative. Mm-hmm. And then we have this like military arc coming up where he's going to step into that and then he's going to be stepping into political mm-hmm. politics and marriage and dealing with that. Um, and it's just like he's doing stuff. He constantly has something new for his character to be thinking about. Yeah. And doing. Perrin has like two characters and like three things that he's thinking about constantly. Yeah. yeah and I think only a few episodes ago you talked about how like Perrin's battle with the wolves doesn't get resolved until like book 12 or 13 or whatever. Yeah. I finished the, um, to- I finished Towers of Midnight like, uh, last week or whatever a couple weeks ago and there's the scene at the end where Perrin like very much the the authorial intent is to put a bow on Perrin's mm-hmm. little wolf narrative and I said in my blog and it is like very true and I can't emphasize enough how true it is that that moment meant nothing to me because it felt like it had already happened like seven times in that book alone. Yeah, it happens like I feel like on every page. Like literally any given moment of Perrin's arc could be him coming to terms with the fact that he's got a bond with the wolves and the fact that it keeps getting like rehashed and rehashed and rehashed is just like exhausting. Yeah, like they're trying to like break it up into different things. Like yeah. what like okay, but he has to deal with the like dreaming part of it. Yeah. And he has to deal with what it means for his uh, berserker type thing and what it means to have a balance in his life and it's just like the, that's not a that metaphor doesn't stretch that far no like it does you're not. overusing something it's just really bad yeah it's like taking the plot device of Hamlet which is indecision uh huh yeah and um making it go on for 87 hours instead of five hours yep. like and even in hamlet it like by the end you're like oh my fucking god you little bastard yeah by the end of choice. hamlet you're like fucking ready to, for hamlet to die yeah you're like please you're, take upsetting. him you're like okay death i'm ready for all these yeah. people to fucking lose it yeah yeah it's just like indecision and i think it's really like indecision can be interesting up to a point because it's something that people deal with and it's like kind of refreshing on the other side where rand gets to a point where he's just like decision 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 yeah. decision decision yeah. to have parent be our thoughtful character that like meditates on things but it just like doesn't there's not enough of a balance with parent it's just like, yeah bleh. and just you very much get the sense with parent more than matt and rand and a lot of other characters that Robert Jordan reached a point with Perrin and just didn't ha- didn't have any plans for yeah. him, which is a little bit sad. But it's like he's mucking around in like some like the weird no man's land of Gialdin, Amadicia, and Morindi for like seven books. Like Perrin sends him, I mean not Perrin, Rand sends him there to get Massima, and then it's just like he's there. Fail gets kidnapped. He has to get her back. Blah 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 blah. And it's just like, yeah. oh man, you know. Yeah, it and so Perrin has truly is truly for me and this book like solidified it just like this log point of view. Yeah, like you have to push through. Yeah, it's like you have to at one point when Emily was reading the Wheel of Time and I wasn't she like wasn't responding to my text which was very rude and she's like sorry I had to get through like 10 Perrin points of view and I just had to like sit down and do it and I was like that's weird but then I got to the same stretch and I was like yeah. you really do have to like block off your time. You have to just like <laughs> fucking do it. Yeah and just dedicate yourself to doing that for an hour or two or whatever otherwise mm. you just won't get through it. It's so bad. Like, yeah, Perrin and Elaine are the two that I just most struggle with to yeah. really get through. But, um, yeah, Perrin, I mean, we'll talk about it more, but Perrin's arc through the Shadow Rising is just fucking brutal to deal with. Yeah. Nynaeve and Elaine are kind of interesting, um, in a real, I, I, Nynaeve and Elaine have a really weird position in this book. Yeah, they do. Where they just, they're not memorable. Honestly, mm-hmm. like I, I, yeah, I never God. remember what Nynaeve and Elaine are doing until I actually get into the meat of this book. And then it's like, oh, yeah, they're continuing this weird Black Aja chase that, again, is kind of just like 
a bit of a poorly written plot for them. It's just, how does Robert Jordan come up with these brilliant things for characters like Matt to do? Yeah. Like, Matt, what, whatever Matt's doing at the moment always feels completely organic. Yeah. Even if it's buck wild. Yeah. Like a building collapsing on him when the Shanshan are invading. Yeah. That moment feels so potent because it just feels like things are lining up. Yeah. And it, I mean, it helps that he's got literally the narrative arc of Matt's dice in his head yeah. to sort of point that out for us. But then moments just don't feel as faded or as important or as relevant for a lot of other characters. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like, and this is not to harp on EHR faves, but I feel like Edwin has very much the same type of thing because she's mm-hmm. a character that's so intentional with her choices. Like, yeah. Nynaeve and Elaine, while kind of get caught up, I think a little bit more and just like wherever the winds take them off, like when this book is very much a choice of that, whereas Edwin makes the active decision yeah. to split from that because she wants to improve herself and learn yeah, different Edwin things. Yeah, Edwin pursues things. Yeah, you're right. And yeah. so she has these moments of like, they're a little less hard to define, but I'll always like remember these, just the chapters when Edwin is first becoming the Amberlin seat and is yeah. having these small victories. Yeah. Those are so good. Yeah. They're so powerful. But then, yeah, you have this weird thing with Nynaeve and Elaine where it's like, Elaine is the one who is, like, the queen. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit odd that she's just sort of romping through the countryside. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, like, limit women based on their social status. Yeah. You know, but it's just, like, an odd choice for... Like, yeah, yeah. It, I almost think I would find Elaine more interesting if she felt a little bit more of like a political responsibility. Yeah. And she tries to tell you that she feels a political you're like, responsibility. You're in a fucking circus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Book five is also just everything in book five is so buck wild. The I fact realized, that- oh, sorry, I realized this is a Wheel of Time TV show thing. What I want is every time uh, Val and Luca's circus is on screen, I want it to be a full-on Baz Luhrmann musical. Yes! I want everyone in the circus yes, yes, yes. to be singing and, like, doing musical numbers. And it always, like, everyone joins in for it, except for the two rivers people. <laughs> so when you get the girls, Nynaeve is just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, even Elaine and Tom and Julian are in it. And she's yeah. like, what? What is going on? Huh. And then you get Matt, and he's like, what is going on? <laughs> God, remember how we cast Lindman while Miranda is Val and Luca? Yeah, and that was I perfect. Stand by that. that would be yeah. so good. And then that would make me so fun because then Lindman while Miranda could write original music for the wheel ah! and just like be in the dramatic circus outfit. And oh, I love him. I know what a perfect man. It would be so good. It would be so good, Emily. That was an excellent Wheel of Time production decision. Thank you. Why aren't we in charge of the goddamn no, Wheel of Time TV so show? Upset. It upsets me more and more every day. <laughs> do such a good job with it. <laughs> they could sing Circus by Britney Spears. Yeah, I intentionally left that off of Matt's playlist because I was like, wait. No. It doesn't it, belong to him. It specifically White. belongs to Val and Luke. <laughs> <laughs> As Lin-Manuel Miranda. Absolute, absolute weird. Oh, we get another fun bard figure in this book. We get Asmodean. Asmodean. <laughs> Asmodean. Yeah. Do you know I also read Ruidae and as Ruidine from this Ruidine. entire that book? Sense. Ruidine. Um, Asmodean. I always think of him as <laughs> Okay, so. <coughs> Sorry, I don't know where that came from. Here's a fun Emily childhood story. Mm. So, as you all know, when I was little, I was obsessed with the TV show Redwall. Mm. <laughs> and in Redwall, in the main arc of the f- first one, you know, Redwall, the actual book, not one of the sequels, the main villain that the main mouse has to fight at the very end to get his magic sword back is named Asmodeus, mm. and it's a snake. Mm. So, like, you picture, like, a little mouse fighting a giant snake. Amazing. And he always comes on screen, and he just does the whole, like, Asmodeus his nice. thing. And I was very afraid of that as a child, because there's, like, Asmodeus is just eating mice and shit. Yeah. It's very upsetting. Anyway, that's why whenever I read Asmodean, I always think that he's a snake, sort of, for a minute. <laughs> My brain, like, inputs snaky vibes. Does he play a flute ever? I think he mostly plays, like, as a little liar or whatever. I mean, if we are thinking of Asmodee and as a snake, Ryan plays the flute. He's got a oh, snake yeah. drummer Sna- thing. Hey! Yeah. Is Asmodee in, like, a snake thing? I don't know what... I'm Googling it. Okay, thanks. Um. Anyway, yeah, Elena and I have occupied this really weird space where they're doing stuff, and it is, like, important for them, like... It's important Nynaeve kind of has this big badass moment where she's fighting Mogadian 
and I like much as I don't like Elaine, it's important that she has interactions here with way less competent rulers. And, um, I don't know, I guess her dad issues with Tom or whatever. Yeah. But like comparatively, when you have things like Matt getting hanged happening on the other continent, other side of the continent, it's like, Oh shit, nothing matters. Yeah. Matt got hanged. Yeah. That's a very... Avienda ran naked through the desert. No, Avienda didn't run naked through the desert for this. Yeah. You have the really cool scene at the, like, very center of this book where Rand is going through Ruidea. Oh, yeah. And seeing all the points of view of the people. God, that that's is such a cool... Yeah, wild. We're gonna take... Um, I saw an interesting thing. I haven't listened to the episode, but the Wheel of Time Spoilers podcast, another mm-hmm. Wheel of Time podcast, recently talked about that episode. Not recently, a couple months ago. And someone mentioned that the, like, glass towers in Ruidane are like concentric the concentric rings of a tree so it's like the oh, history damn. of the people damn yeah, like the family tree yeah that's so interesting yeah so we'll especially because you have the tree of life like 10 feet away that Matt is getting mm-hmm. hanged from so Asmodeus to go back for a second oh, is a prince of demons in or in judo islamic lore the king of the earthly spirits okay um and he's an antagonist in the Dudo canonical book of Tobit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Asmodeus represents lust in Binsfield's classification of demons, um, referred to as a prin- one of the seven princes of hell, so the seven demons, or seven deadly sins. But is he Snick? I'm trying, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. I thought <laughs> I found it. The name Asmode is believed to derive from the Avestan language, where it means wrath or demon. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find snack. Maybe my metaphor will fall upon itself. Sorry. Oh, I mean, that's okay. I mean, we'll just take Red Wall as the canon, not the Bible. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. It's still good. Wikipedia is so wild. I know. Asmodeus was widely depicted as having a handsome visage, good manners, and an engaging nature. Huh, well, that makes sense for our, our emo boy. God, it's, he's so short-lived. He really only has the next book. Oh, Asmodine. You know, rain, burns brightly like a star in the night sky and then gone. No, I don't think he's ever looks like a snickety snick. Unless you want to take the general idea that a prince of demons would be a snake in the Garden of Eden. I have no idea. Asmodeus also also features heavily in the lore of the game Dungeons and Dragons as the ruler of the Nine Hells. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Didn't know that. <laughs> Haven't interacted with that one yet. Asmodeus appears as Magnus Bane's father in <laughs> Shadow Hunter. Why would you bring this cri- series I'm, you'd need based to- on Cassandra Clare's <laughs> popular series, The Mortal Angels. Get off the Wikipedia, you're torturing me with this. <laughs> Literally torment. Okay, we're done with Asmodeus. Sorry, I'm only going to delete all of that because it turned out to be uninteresting. No, I won't. I'll delete some of it. Asmodeus. The pauses. Asmodeus? Asmo- Asmodeus. Asmosnek. <laughs> Asmosnek. <laughs> I feel like I'm having a stroke. <laughs> That's what we go for in every episode of EHR. If you don't feel like you're having a stroke, then what's the point? I don't know what we were talking about. My name and Elaine, weird. <coughs> yeah. And then there's Rand, who we already talked about Rand. Edwin doing some odd shit. Yeah, Edwin's are his buck wild when she's with the wise ones. It's just like, yeah, it's like boot camp. She yeah. just is doing boot camp the entire time. Mm-hmm. And then there's fucking Matt, who, yeah, has an, like literally everything... <coughs> Sorry. Central to Matt's character for the next like eleven books happens in this book. Yeah. So like, what the hell? No, oh, Maddie. No, oh, Matt. And then there's the White Tower breaking, which comes back to your thing about all these geopolitical yeah. shenanigans happening. Importantly, the first chapter of this covers the setup for the White Tower breaking, mm-hmm. and also the return of the Shanshin, which are going to yes. be the two major happenings that kind of influence. Uh, the continent for the rest of the series. Yeah, and the Shantan are their own uh, geopolitical nightmare, so... Yeah, and I guess, excuse me, the Ale are also, like, a major thing, yep. because they're going to leave the Waste 
prompted by the events of this book and yeah. follow Rand, more or less. But also some of them will choose not to follow Rand because of the stupid way he... Because right. Rand's an idiot. Because Rand's a dipshit and he yeah. doesn't understand cultural trauma. Or whatever. But it's also like, what would anyone else have done? I have no idea how to solve that problem. No, like, it's an unsolvable problem. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's about to break bad at the end of this book. Yeah. Shit. But then we kind of have to get through this book. Happily, the Fires of Heaven does not include any parent points of view. I know, that's why it's one of my faves. Because he's on his honeymoon. Gross. I know. Yeah. But also, I'm just so happy I don't have to read about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, truly, we do get sex at glue, though, which is unfortunate. Why do we get sex at glue? We get, there's a lot of sex in the Fires of Heaven. Yeah, Fires of Heaven's a kinky Sexy book, yeah. yeah. Sex at glue, then there's Matt with his, like, Dom Ale lady. Yeah. Who, yeah, there's some weird vibes going on there. Yeah. Um, and... And fear, as always. Tits McGee herself. Oh, is that the one? No. Book six is where Edwin meets up with Gatewin and just starts, like, having her sex meetups with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. And the, t- the innkeeper is like, okay, horny kids. And Edwin's like, don't make fun of me. We're just kissing and doing hand stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we're just doing, we're doing everything but anal. <laughs> so it's Oh, Edwin. The only good thing that Gaywin has ever brought to this series is that he seems to make Edwin sexually satisfied. I know. Like, her libido skyrockets whenever. Yeah, right? Which I don't understand. He's like, my libido does the opposite when I, I literally want to kill myself whenever he's on screen. Blech. Anyway. Blech. Yeah, and then Edwin. Does she start having sex dreams in book five, or is that later? After I think it might be book eight, six, yeah. It's like she starts having sex dreams and then she runs into him and she's like, I can finally make my sex dreams a reality. Which is like, good for you, girl. Yeah. But Get like, it. also, Rand's sex dreams in this really <coughs> just break me fundamentally as a person. Because they're so pervy. <laughs> they are so gross. <laughs> not to like, sexuality should not be a thing of shame, but the problem is that Rand yeah, harbors a lot of shame. Not to yuck anyone's yums, but yuck. Oh my <laughs> god, what? What did you just say? Blue praise. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't want to yuck your yums. You I've never, heard, never that. heard that. Yeah. I hate it. I do too. It's why it's hilarious. <laughs> Where did it come from? And it's literally for this specific instance. Like, <laughs> God like dropped it I don't into wanna, my head. I don't want to kink shame you is the definition. I don't want to yuck your yums, but I've literally never heard this. What dark corner of the internet are you? I inhabiting? wasn't on the internet. I've heard that legitimately all my life. Not all my life, probably. I mean, Utah County, come on, but it's a Must phrase. Be a Utah thing. I'm it is not a phrase. Shit <laughs> you're in my life. You've lived in Utah. Yeah, I mean, I've lived in Utah, really. but I'm not of Utah. I'm googling it. I'm gonna. Put no, yuck. I don't. It's not that I don't believe you. Yums. It's just that it's gross. And yuck I your yum origin. Disgusting is what it is. Yeah. Don't ever type yuck your yum origin into Google. You'll come up with some weird shit. <laughs> it's in an article. By the Huffington Post in 2016, so it has at least been around that long. <laughs> yeah, you heard it all your life. I sh- no, I like. It. I'm gonna say it all the time now. No, I don't want to yuck your yums. I, what I'm saying is, I don't want to king shame Rand, but I'm fully shaming him for his dumb sex dreams. It's I get, and I just think Rand harbors so much shame around sexuality. Yeah, which really, yeah, the shame oh, just jumps do, out. We these. should do. Yeah, we should do an episode of Sex Positivity and the Wheel of Time. It should be one of our themes. What What do you mean? Just because, like, there are some very wonderfully sex-positive characters. Oh. Avienda. Avienda's very sex-positive, yeah. And then there's Rand, who... Rand's very not sex-positive. Matt is sex-positive, until bad things happen. Yeah. Yeah. And there's Edwin, who's like, hey, boy toy. <laughs> hey, lay down, I'm gonna hop on your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Move it or lose it, bucko. <laughs> Come on, champ. <laughs> I haven't got all day. <laughs> okay. We have to end this episode. I don't okay. know what this was. I've, if you have enjoyed the last few minutes so thoroughly, you should consider supporting us on Patreon. No, we haven't earned it. <laughs> Woo! Also, I don't think last episode we thanked Glenn and Mackenzie for our wonderful uh, theme song. Oh, yeah. That was because we had a really weird intro. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Glenn and Mackenzie, for the use of our theme song. It's a departure. <laughs> <from> the <laughs> <old>. <laughs> <laughs> the taste.
to bed. No, nope. <laughs> it's an original composition by a beautiful creature. Yeah, thank you so much. We love Do we it. have any housekeeping? Uh, follow us on the internet. Check out our website. Yeah. We were, I worked pretty hard on it. Yeah. Emily it edited great. it very hard because I don't know how to write words. No, I did. You did. I did? You edited it at least so that it didn't yeah, look like garbage. Yeah, it was very garbage. heavily. I think I removed some commas or something. Yeah, I'm pretty comma heavy. Oh. Um, Everyone is, as I've learned at my job. So do that and enjoy your week. And we love it to hear. We love hearing you tweet about the show and comment on our Instagram and put us in your Instagram stories or whatever that you do. It's really helpful because obviously we can say that we have such a great podcast but nobody believes that they believe it when you the listeners our beautiful listeners say it so thank you to everyone who's been talking about us on social media and leaving reviews on itunes and telling your friends about it we really appreciate it we'll be back next week with at the very least the first chapter of the shadow rising who's to say how far we'll get into it we'll also probably be releasing a reading schedule sometime in the next week yes by the time this comes out it'll probably be up yeah check out our website so if you want to follow along, that's where it'll be. Sure. Um, do you have a sign off? Yes. Okay, great. So for the past nine or ten months, Emily and I have been living in this apartment. Yeah. Across the hall from us is a boy that I went to high school with. Oh, God. Um, who I was, like, friendly with. We ran in the same friend circles. I have not made any contact with him. We have seen each other across the parking lot several times. And the other day, we walked up the stairs together, and I, the most awkward person in the world, still didn't say anything. I just went inside my apartment. So it was a pretty astounding bit of social awkwardness that I committed on our stoop. Was he the one who, just when we were yeah. standing there a minute? Oh, God. Because it's like, now it's gone on too long. Yeah. Maybe, does he think you, do you, have you acknowledged that you know each other even? I mean, I'm like, I've smiled at him. But yeah, that could just be like, normal human But like, behavior. I, I am not an easy person to forget with his hair and like stuff. So like, I, or maybe he's forgotten me. I shouldn't be vain. But, doubtful. <laughs> Thanks. So anyway, it was extremely awkward, and now I want to die. No. <laughs> so, Neighbors are the worst. Goodbye. <laughs>